We're going to move away now from um, profiling offenders and start thinking about explanations for offending behaviour. And in this first lesson, we're going to look at genetic and neural explanations for offending behaviour. So genetic explanations we've come across before and just some reminders first of all that when we talk about genetic explanations we don't want to say things like um, individuals who have a gene. Remember um, genes come in different forms so we're talking about um, individuals having a particular allele of a gene or of activity within a particular gene. And remember also that um, as with all complex behaviours, there is no one gene that is responsible for making people a criminal. So what researchers have done is focused on candidate genes. So these are genes which could have some responsibility for um, offending behaviour. And two genes um, have been um, isolated particularly. The first one is the MAOA gene, which codes for an enzyme called monoamine oxidase. And it's been found that low levels of MAOA are associated with criminal behaviour. The second gene which has been identified as a possible candidate is CDH13. So low activity from this gene has also been found in offenders. Looking at neural explanations, and we'll start with brain areas. Um, so one possible explanation is linked to antisocial personality disorder, or APD. And this um, is associated with two areas of the brain, the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. Now the prefrontal cortex is generally responsible for things like moral behaviour. Um, and it's been found that in people with APD, which... Um, is quite an aggressive and antisocial um, disorder, they tend to have less grey matter in this prefrontal cortex. Now less grey matter would suggest that less moral behaviour is going to be displayed and therefore more criminal behaviour. Now the amygdala is also associated with APD. The amygdala is a, a small part of um, the brain sort of buried right in the middle and it's associated with quite basic instincts like emotion recognition and particularly the recognition of fear. Now people with APD um, do tend to have a smaller amygdala and this is associated with higher aggression levels quite possibly because if it's not possible for an individual to recognize when someone is afraid then they don't have that um, external cue to tell them that the behavior they're showing say aggressive behaviour, is wrong in some way. If we look at more neural explanations, this time focusing on neurotransmitters. So the two neurotransmitters that are implicated in criminal behaviour, first of all is serotonin. So low levels of serotonin tend to be associated with increased aggression. Now, serotonin works on the prefrontal cortex, so there is almost certainly going to be a link between this and the neural explanation that looks at brain areas and the functioning of the prefrontal cortex. The second neurotransmitter is noradrenaline. Now, high levels of noradrenaline um, provoke the stimulation of the fight or flight response or are involved in the stimulation of the fight or flight response, um, which, as you will know from biopsychology, one of those possible responses responses is an aggressive response. So high levels of noradrenaline tend to be associated with increased aggression. So you can read more about these explanations in your pre-reading and it'll go into it in a bit more detail. Um, but before you come into the lesson, make sure you can explain what we mean by candidate genes, identify the two candidate genes associated with offending behaviour, explain the effects that these genes have on the body and the associated behaviour, identify and explain the brain areas associated with offending behaviour and identify and explain the neurotransmitters associated with offending behaviour.